Five, four, three, two, one. Thunderbirds are go. Take a look at that one. Ooh, I'd love to take a pot shot at one of these brutes. I wouldn't recommend that, Mr. Blackman. You might stir yourself out of a whole heap of trouble. They are arriving, Doctor. Thank you, Mrs. Files. All right, McGill. You'd better come with me. Yes, Doctor. Boy, this is some backwater. I'm sure we haven't come up the wrong creek. We've been in this darn boat for hours. I thought you said you knew this river. Like the back of my head. How the heck I let myself get talked into coming up this neck of the woods, I'll never know. Now, I tell you... We're that... there. Huh? We're there. Mr. Blackmore? Right. And you're watching? This is Hector McGill, my assistant. Pleased to meet you. Well, I'd appreciate it, gentlemen, if we could get this business over with as soon as possible. You, uh, wait here, huh? Yeah, I'll wait here. Otherwise, you'd never get back to the river station, would you? Well, listen, Cope, we don't have to take any insolence from you. You get paid to run that boat of yours up this stretch of river, and that's it. Yeah. Looks like we've got a storm coming up. Okay, I, I don't want to get stranded in a storm up this backwater. Let's get this thing over with. What 
we are about to disclose to you, Blackmer, has been shown to no one outside the four walls of this laboratory. Well, let's make it snappy then, huh? Just give me the general picture. Blackmer, take a look at those plants over there in that cabinet. You recognize them? Yeah. The river up there is full of weed. That, um, weed is the Sedonicus americanus, a very rare plant that grows only in this part of the river. It must be gathered and processed in this laboratory within hours of being picked. Blackmer, it has properties that will astound you. The process of the The world is heading for a grave food shortage. Now, this plant you are holding is going to solve that problem. Do you mean we're going to start eating this? <laughs> uh, not, uh, not quite, Mr. Blackmer. Uh, take a look at that beaker over there. The processed juices that it is collecting can be used as an additive to the diet of the livestock of the world and could develop animals that would enlarge our meat output fantastically. It's called theramine. One or two tiny drops of it could increase the meat output of the Argentine tenfold. Now you will appreciate the secrecy we had to resort to. Yes, indeed. But how are you so sure of this? Our experiments have proved it. Um, Miguel, better put the theremin away for the day. Yes, Doctor. Mr. Blackmer, step this way. These rabbits were imported from North America last year. They have been fed and cared for with normal diet. Whereas these rabbits here have been given a minimal dose of therapy. Wow, I'll be, say, well, that's some lettuce you've been feeding them with. These rabbits have been given only one dose of the drug. Otherwise, they've been fed normally. Well, Mr. Blackmer, what do you think of our new discovery? Has it commercial possibilities, would you say? Absolutely. Well, I'm lost for words, Doctor. Most remarkable achievement. And you, Mr. Blackmer, are the first person outside these four walls to be shown these creatures. <laughs> going to be dangerous, is it? Of course it's not going to be dangerous, Mother. There's nothing to worry about. Alan's got an excellent head for heights. He's just going to fix the aerial mast, that's all. Oh, well, there's nothing to worry about. That's right. <laughs> How long do you reckon this job will take, Alan? I don't know. Depends what I find when I get out there. Oh, 
Okay, Virgil, take it away. Okay, Father. I've got Ellen up there. Right, Virgil. I bet it's pretty windy up there. I've located the trouble, Father. It's gonna be a cinch. Well done, Alan. That was quick. What's the problem? Some of the junction plates on the leads from dish number seven have got corroded. That's all. How long will it take you to fix it? No time at all. Tell Virgil to make one trip around the island, and I'll be ready for him to pick me up. Phew. That was a close one. Well, this is where we find out whether the fault is really down here on Earth. This is Jeff Tracy calling Thunderbird 5. Base to Thunderbird 5. Oh, dear, that means we're out of touch with John. Yes, Mother, our whole organization is thrown out of action until we can get through to John in the space station. I thought you said a moment ago there was nothing to worry about. Oh, well, that was quite different, Mother. We were talking about... Go ahead, John. Gee, Dad, am I glad to be back in touch. What happened? It was corrosion on the junction plates of one of the dishes of the beacon. Alan must just this moment have fixed it. It's certainly good to know we're back in business again. That be all, sir. Yes, thank you, Mrs. Files. You've locked everything up? I have. And I have put Mr. Blackmere's things in the guest bedroom. Oh, uh, thanks. Good night, then, gentlemen. Well, it's mighty good of you to put me up for the night like this. Well, you would never have got back to the river station in a storm like this. What about the uh, boatman? You mean Culp? Uh, Mrs. Files said she would fix him up on the couch in the study. Very grudgingly, I may say. Looks to me as if she knows more about Culp's past than she admits to. They say he was an associate of the previous owner of the house, Lopez. Mrs. Files was housekeeper then, too. Honestly, I just don't know how you two have stood it so long in this godforsaken spot. I... What's going on? Those lights. Uh, it's always happening. Must fix them sometime. I thought you had turned in for the night. I thought perhaps you might be wanting the keys of the laboratory, Mr. McGill, before the morning. No, Mrs. Files, we shan't be going into the lab tonight. You look after them, as usual. Very well, sir. Good night. Good night, Mrs. Files.
Well, thanks, Doctor, for the hospitality. I'll uh, be seeing you. So you, um, you don't regret your journey after all, Mr. Blackburn? Uh, certainly not. I'm going to get this out of me on the market as soon as possible. I'll be sending uh, Muller, my top research man, down to see you right away. All right, Colt. Let's get going. Yes, sir, Mr. Blackburn. strange. This has been tampered with. This is not theramine. This is files. In the boat. Well, it wasn't me, Mr. Blackman. What the heck was it, man? <laughs> Mrs. Files, I was given one to stand that this laboratory was locked up as usual last night. It was locked, sir, as usual. Nevertheless, someone has been in here overnight. Overnight? Blackman, Culp, could they have been in here? This is terrible. That drug could have horrible consequences if it got into the wrong hands. Kill it! Kill it! Orchard, take a look at that. The theremin has got into the swamp. Those men don't stand a chance. Ooh. They've been hit. Come on. We've got to do something. still alive. It looks like Blackmer.
others are all right. They got in the side entrance. Oh, thank heaven. What about Culp? Where can we go? Those brutes will have the house down in no time. The laboratory. That's the safest place. and get help. I'm going to radio the river station. Now, what the heck are they going to do? Send out the militia? Well, it'll take them hours to get here. <laughs> Just listen to that. This house isn't going to be able to stand up to this punishment. What are we going to do? International rescue. What, what, what was that? Send for international rescue. They will help. OK, McGill. Get onto that radio. Send out a distress call. Yes, sir. If anyone in this world can get us out of here, it's them. Calling International Rescue. Calling International Rescue. There's just nothing we can do. There's now three of these monsters attacking the house. Giant alligators? Giant alligators? It's a lonely spot far up the river. It might be a tricky spot to land. The terrain sounds treacherous. All right, John, tell them we're on our way. Give Scott a direction when he's airborne. Scott, off you go. Yes, sir. What do you make of this, Brains? Well, uh, we really don't have enough to go on as yet, but it sounds like some kind of freak mutation. Uh, let's hope it's localized. Seems that conventional weapons are out of the question, Virgil. Yes, Father. Anyway, if those four people are in the house, we might not be able to get too close to the alligators for selective fire. Well, I guess pod six would be the best for this operation. Okay, Father. Come on, Alan. Gordon, let's go. Right. See you in Thunderbird. be the river station there at the junction. Yeah. Hmm. It's pretty swampy terrain. This is gonna be a difficult one. I wonder how these people are standing up to the alligators. Where are they? International Rescue are on their way, so relax, Doctor. Relax? With three giant alligators knocking the house down? Be fair, McGill. Orchard! Wait. Can you hear something? What's that noise? It's them. It's International Rescue. Father, I've arrived at the distress area. How does it look, Scott? Oh, pretty hazardous, Father, pretty hazardous. There's three massive alligators attacking the house where these people are. Think you'll be able to deal with them? Well, they're sturdy brutes. I don't know how effective our missiles are going to be. And besides, the house is right in the line of fire. This is International Rescue calling McGill. Do you read me? Loud and clear, International Rescue. Hey, where exactly are you? We're in the basement laboratory. Do you think you'll get us out in time? Well, I'm gonna try to frighten these reptiles off with a slight diversion. All right, International Rescue. But I don't know how much longer we can hang on. Uh, don't worry. My buddies are on their way in another craft. We're gonna get you out of there. 
All right, Scott. I get it. What about you? I'm going to try to get clear of the area, then somehow get in the house. Right then. Good luck. I'll be over the rescue zone in four and three quarter minutes. Gil, now hear this. I'm nearly at the swamp. Keep everyone well clear of the lab window. I'm going to come into the house that way. I see. He's crazy. He'll never do it. Right. Here goes. Right, first of all, is there no other way out of this house? There used to be one other way. What? Uh, the previous owner, Mr. Lopez, had a secret landing stage built for emergencies with an underground passageway from the house. Where is it, then? Mr. Lopez never told me. He told only one other, but he is now dead. You mean Culp? Yes, Culp. <laughs> oh, come on, we've got to get out of here. all around the house now. Just listen to that racket. No, over there. They've got in. Right. I stand back. Alligators didn't get you after all. <laughs> A brilliant deduction. 
No, I use Lopez's secret waterway, but this is no time for explanations. You're gonna do things my way, or else I can cause even more unpleasantness with Dr. Orchard's remarkable discovery. <laughs> I don't get it. What's wrong, son? Well, Scott got into the house all right, but for the last few minutes, his line has been dead. I just can't seem to get in contact with him. Never mind, Virgil. He's probably got some scheme in hand. How far are you now from the danger zone? I've arrived. Right. The first thing we've got to do is to get those reptiles away from the house. Seems to be working. We'd better stand by with the tranquilizer guns. Yeah, they're moving back to the river. going on in that house. This is Thunderbird 2 calling mobile control. Come in, Scott. Do you read me? You just say one word, international rescue, and it'll be your last. Come in, Scott. Do you read me? I don't get it. Okay, Virgil, we're all set. Let's have a crack at these alligators. F.A.B. Shooting, fellas. Let's go back and see how they look. Good. We've hit these two all right. But what about the third one? Yeah, it's headed back to the house. use the tranquilizer gun so near the folks in the house. I've got it. I'll go out on my hover bike and draw them off. No, Alan, you wouldn't stand a chance. The hover bike cannon would be useless against that baby. We've got to do something. Alan, come back. <laughs> Just about two minutes from now, that wall is going to collapse altogether, and you know what will happen. Well, just let me use the ray gun. Maybe I could cripple a reptile. One move and you're dead.
get me. It's working. It's working. is clear. Now I'm gonna be first on the market with this little potion. Now you radio your butters in that craft over there and tell them I'm coming out now. No, cop, it's not safe yet. We don't know how many more of these monsters there are out there. Look, if you don't do as I say, there's gonna be more of them. You pals out there have just got to make one move to stop me and I pull this little cocktail into the river. Calling Thunderbird 2. Calling... Scott. Oh, at last. What's up? Now, listen, Virg. There's a guy here pointing a gun at us. He wants you to give him a clear passage from the house. Yes? Yeah. Well, he threatens to put some more of Dr. Orchard's drug into the swamp if you try to stop him. And you know what that means. Thanks, bud. Did you get that, Gordon? I sure did. Better stand by in Thunderbird 4. What's that? Virgil! Alligator! Where? The file! What's happened to the file? I hate to think. Firing missile! Gordon, we've got to find that file. I think I saw it. If that liquid gets mixed into the river, this nightmare will start all over again. Virgil, any help of finding that file? Gordon's going out to have a look. Any signs of it, Gordon? With all this green. 
greenery around is like looking for a... Hey. Gordon, what's up? What is it? All right, Virgil. No panic. I don't think there'll be any more giant alligators. I found the file. It didn't even get scratched. You boys certainly did a great job. Blackmer and Orchard have just announced that the drug is going to go under international control. Yep, I guess that's the best thing for it. Wait till Tintin hears about the rescue operation. She got back from her shopping expedition a few minutes before you fellows. Oh, here she is now. Hello, everyone. How was the rescue? Tell me all about it. Yeah, well, uh, there was this house on a swamp, you see, and... Uh... Yeah, and uh, there are a couple of scientists there working on a new drug. Oh, never mind. You, you can tell me all about it later. Um, Alan? Uh, yes, Tintin? I've got something for you. Something? For me? Oh, I, I know it's not your birthday until tomorrow, but come and see what I brought back for you. It's in the bathroom. The bathroom? <laughs> Hey, what do you suppose Tintin wants to show Alan in the bathroom? Can I open my eyes yet, Tintin? Yes, you can open them now. You always said how nice it would be to have a pet. A baby alligator. Oh, no. This one's fully grown. It's a special breed of pygmy alligator. <laughs> Tintin, thank you. It's what I've always wanted. A cute little alligator. Happy birthday, Alan. 